Our next speaker for the day is a full-time student, full-time teacher, full-time business school administrator, full-time husband, and a full-time father of three children. <laughs> He's the poster child of the ideal student 2.0, a non-traditional yes. student who earned three bachelor's degrees and a master degree while working full-time, getting married, and having children. His master's degree is in educational technology, and this coupled with his rather eclectic educational background that has Ooh. provided him with a unique insight right. into the idea of being a student 2.0. May I please welcome on stage Mr. William Jones. Okay. They're setting that up, so give me just a second. Mr. Anil, thank you. Very inspiring words, and the worst thing for me, I have to follow him. I will try to live up to what you said. When I received the invitation to come here and speak about Student 2.0, it resonated with me. This idea of what do students have to do to succeed in the future. As she said, met my wife at university while going to class. Married my wife at university while going to classes. <laughs> Had our first child in our bachelor's program. Had our second child in our bachelor's program. Had our third child when we graduated. Please, for all of the students that are listening right now, finish your degree first. <laughs> it makes things so much easier. All right? So, student 2.0. Uh, I hit the wrong button. Here we go. Student 2.0. Now, when you hear the term student 2.0, web 2.0, or any of these 2.0s, you're thinking, okay, it's an iteration. It's a change except no change occurs in a vacuum. So while we're talking about the students themselves changing, we also have to take into account that the entire world has changed in the last 50 years. Education has changed. Employment has changed. Our definitions of family have changed. So why not our definitions of students? Looking forward for students today, the people that are speaking with me today are from a very eclectic mix and they will be speaking about lifelong learning. They will be speaking about learning because being uh, special needs or handy challenged instead of handicapped, handy capable individuals. They don't need me to speak for them. What I want to speak to you about is education though and what it takes to be a lifelong learner. Now looking forward, I believe one of my degrees is in history. So in order to understand the future, we have to look to the past. Now, I'm an American, so most of my experiences come from America, but I think they are still similar across the globe. So first of all, I want you to think about your grandparents. What is their level of education? I'll tell you about mine. My grandfather graduated the eighth grade. Is there a laser in this? See that? There we go. Graduated the eighth grade. He was drafted into the army to fight a world war. He never went back to school. He went to work in construction. Actually, this isn't his picture. This is just a famous picture. He actually went to work in manufacturing. He worked in the same job for 35 years. He started sweeping the floors. When he retired 35 years later, he was the plant manager. His education was an eighth grade education. My parents went to school. They were told, graduate high school, and you can get a good job. Well, that is not a picture of my father, um, but something similar to it. My father was a plumber. Graduated high school, had a good job, raised a good family. When I was a kid, I was told, come on now, this is funny. Okay? I was told, get your high school diploma, go to university, you'll never have to go to school again. <laughs> Liars. <laughs> and now when I tell my students and my kids, finish high school, get your MBA, become a doctor. Do you notice the progression? Eighth grade, high school, bachelor's degree, and now we're telling you you need a master's or a PhD. Now, I'm not saying that you need to go to a full school like mine or even like Manipal. You need the information. This is part of what I'm talking about, which is information literacy. Okay? So we've talked about the past. Let's talk about the present. Let's talk about students today. 
There's been a lot of studies that have been done, a lot of research that's been done. On average, you students are lazy in the classroom. Own it. You will read 10 books a year. Not because you want to, but because you have to read them for school. But you will also read over 3,000 web pages and over 2,000 Facebook profiles. At the same time, you're going to spend about four hours a day on the internet. How many of you are on the internet four hours a day? Raise your hands. Let me see them. And how many of you use that internet for studying? Anybody with their hand up is a liar. Okay? But one of the things that social media has done, it's become the news source for the youth. Many of you trust Facebook over uh, BBC. Many of you will trust Twitter over Dubai One. Here's the issue, though, with social media. Let's go over it and let's look at it. First, Facebook. Everybody's got it. I'm not going to read these numbers to you because you probably already know them, or maybe you don't. There's 1.3 billion people who use Facebook. If it was a country, Facebook would be the third largest country in the world, behind India and China. Think about that for a second. Okay? 48%. That means half of you students in this room, when you wake up, the first thing you do is get on Facebook. How many of you do that? Let me see your hands. Come on. For those in the front who are older, you might want to turn around because it's kind of shocking. Okay? Uh, that's Facebook. Let's talk about Twitter. For those of you who don't know Twitter, Twitter is a 140 character social media platform that lets you basically send SMSs to each other and post what you want. Here's the issue here. One billion people use it, and the average person on Twitter posts 307 tweets a day. That's one tweet, I think, every 12 minutes. So those of you that are sitting in your classes in the back, ignoring your teacher with your little phone out, I know what you're doing. Mr. J's class sucks, LOL. Uh-huh. And then we got YouTube. One billion users. One hour of video uploaded onto YouTube. I'm sorry, it's 100 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute. That means it would take you over a year to watch one hour worth of the video that's uploaded. There's a study that was just done. It talks about all of the information that has ever been created in the human existence. All of the information from the dawn of time until the year 2008, that amount of information is created and posted on the internet in one day. Let that sink in for a second. Now, a lot of that stuff, of course, is cat videos on YouTube and memes like this. <laughs> and you know what? Here's my other question. How many of you know who this is? <laughs> okay. Here's the problem, though. All of this social media is where you're getting your information. All of this social media is stuff that you trust. You can read the cartoon. It's kind of funny. How do you think my first day of kindergarten went? They don't even have Wi-Fi. Now, in 2001, a very famous um, uh, theorist named Prensky came up with this theory. Now, many of you students may not know it. It's called the digital natives versus the digital immigrants. This is the idea that anybody born after the year 1985 has grown up using the internet, has grown up having smartphones and Wi-Fi and all of this other stuff. And the, the belief that he had was that all of you know how to use the, all of that material better than old people like me. That's what he says. Whoop, oh, hit the wrong button again. Here's the issue. He's wrong. Many of you have really good ability and knowledge, but it's very shallow knowledge. This is a bunch of studies on it talking about it. I don't need to read it all to you, but here you go. Four hours a day, 3% are studying. 90% of students around the world are online. 5% use it to study. This is a study of 30,000 people. It says you guys know how to turn on Word. You can get into PowerPoint. You can get on Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, any of the other social media sites, but it says you can't research. So when you see things on Twitter and on Facebook, 
You don't know if it's true or not, but you post it. This one here. You have high level access. Oh, wrong button again. Here we go. Or Google University. All right, guys, you get given an assignment by your teacher. Where's the first place you go? Do you ever go to the second page of a search? You have to be really desperate to go to the second page. How about the third page? When I tell you there are more than three pages, half of you are going, really? <laughs> OK? I have a friend who calls it Google Foo. <sighs> Your Google Foo is, not, is weak. Come, grasshopper. <laughs> Here's the thing. I love this one. We're now getting to what I'm talking about, which is student 2.0. I call it the future, but let's be very honest. The idea of student 2.0 is now. For academics, what you need is information literacy. Is what you're seeing true? How do you know if it's true? How can you tell if it's true? I truly love this one. I get this one on Facebook at least once a week. You guys know who this is, right? Who is it? Who? OK, that's a name. Tell me more. The, you could read that and say, I'm Bill Gates. Come on. Tell me more. Who is he? Microsoft. He's the third richest man in the world. OK, and what does this say? Oh, you guys can't read it because it's too far away. You, you, you've seen it on your Facebook. If you share this, I will give you $5,000. Do you know how many times this has been shared? Millions. OK. Do you believe that he's going to give you $5,000 for real? Me neither. But if you do believe it, I know of a Nigerian prince who will give you $5 million to help him get the money out of his country. You guys, have you guys gotten that spam email? Because just making sure. I want to make sure it's not me. It could just be me. Now, let's define it. Information literacy is, and I will read this to you because you notice the quotations? I stole it from somewhere else. The ability to know when there's a need for information, the ability to identify it, locate it, evaluate it, and effectively use that information for the problem at hand. I stole that from, take a guess. Ah, you guys are brilliant. Wikipedia, which is one of the biggest problems with information literacy. Why is Wikipedia a problem for information literacy, guys? You tell me. Hmm? Anyone can change it. So you guys have been paying attention in your class. Teachers, they're not too bad. Anybody can change it. Anybody can write whatever they want. So here's my problem with information literacy and with many of these things that get posted. Winston Churchill in the 1930s. I know, I know, he's so old. That was back before, like, telephones. God, said that a lie gets halfway around the world by the time the truth puts on its pants. And in today's age, not only does a lie get halfway around the world, it goes around the world five, six, seven, ten times before the truth even opens its eyes. That's how fast this information spreads. Okay? Ah, uh, one of the biggest culprits. Now, don't get me wrong. Your teachers and myself, we love Wikipedia almost as much as you love Wikipedia. It's a place to start your research. What did I say? Start, not finish, not copy paste. Uh, OK? It's a place to start, but you need to go further. You need to ask yourself some questions. Who wrote this? Why did they write it? What's in it for them? That's information literacy in a nutshell. So whenever somebody makes a claim to you, such as, what was the one that I saw the other day? Um, Oh, I just lost it. I had a really good one. It was a claim about something or other, I forget. But it was, it was so preposterous. The first words I want you to say when somebody makes a claim is, prove it. You should even say it to your instructors. You guys are going to hate me. I'm so sorry. That's what I teach my students. I make a claim in class. Their first words are, prove it. And I say, OK, and I show it to them. If the person can't prove it, no. Nah. OK? I love this argument. I get this from students all the time. Lastly, here's the deal with information literacy. Here's the whole purpose of my speech. I don't want you just memorizing facts. Where, where is that in this pyramid? Right there. This is a Bloom's taxonomy and a theory of hierarchies of, of education. I don't want you down at the bottom. I want you at the top. Memorizing facts anybody can do. You have to be able to understand it, apply it, 
analyze it, evaluate it, and then you have to be able to create new information. And this is really the crux of what Student 2.0 is. Taking information from all over the world, from the wonderful video that we had, that, that was fantastic, from Mr. Anil's speech, taking information from mine, and at the end of the today, putting it together into something new that is for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks to our sponsors, Yellow Egg Cafe, Farmers, Rasasi, Quanta, Cool and Cool, Barakat Quality Plus, and Korean Printing Press.